uranium. There was a great article about uh, 2005. It was called The Other Yellow Metal. I don't know if you guys remember this. The stocks were all about, um, we were about 15, 20 cents. And um, he writes it up. Of course, as we all know, um, uranium stocks went from anywhere from, if you saw Paladin, it went from five cents to $12. And I remember the same kind of gloom and doom that we have today in uranium. And, but the reality is that, you know, you can buy something that's already in momentum or be a contrarian. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room, but that's why you guys are here, because we can listen to guys like Rick, uh, people who do their home like Marin, you've got um, Mickey Fulp and these guys. So with them, they can teach you a lot about what goes on. And so when you look at the smart guys, and I think if you talk to Rick Rule, he'll tell you that the most money he ever made in his life was uranium stocks. And they were like, I can use this term here in Canada, I cannot use it in the States. It's like a hockey stick. The move that you see in stocks in uranium is massive compared to any other because there's very, very few names. Um, and I'm explaining what it's like now because you guys are very, it's very similar to what it was like in 2003, four. Uh, people would always talk about gold, nobody would talk about uranium. And you would see this constant um, disbelief. You would speak, look at the math. Um, so what we're seeing today are very depressed prices in uranium stocks, and it's all because of the spot price. So I believe when the spot price um, does move, um, you're gonna see massive moves. Um, we're trading around under 30 cents. We were trading at that price before we made the discovery on PLS. Just to give you an idea how out of touch the market is with the fundamentals of the deal. So anyways, to build a case for uranium first, I have to build a case for electricity. Well, I think all you guys know enough about cryptocurrencies, electric vehicles, and also demand for SMR, small, uh, small modular reactors. Anybody can tell me who the biggest investor is in SMRs? Bill Gates, there we go. And the other group that's pretty catching up and is the, the Chinese. The, I went to them when I, in 2013, I saw some of their models, and the idea eventually is instead of having diesel uh, with um, <coughs> in offshore rigs, so using millions of uh, diesel, they're actually going to use a small reactor. So that's what's, so you got demand, SMRs, electric vehicles. If you look at demand for electricity, it's going through the roof. Like Switzerland, the amount of energy they use as a country is the amount of energy that's needed for cryptocurrencies, believe it or not. Think about it. There's a whole, that's how much energy is needed. The other thing is, like Bill Gates says, if you believe that humans make a difference in the, within the climate, then Nuclear is the only, is ideal for dealing with climate change because it's the only carbon-free, scalable energy source that's available today. And that's important because those of you who have seen what wind and, uh, you know, et cetera, it's not just reliable. Um, the last thing is, a lot of guys are going to get up here and tell you what they're going to do. But very few can say, we've done it. Now, we've been in this space since 1995. Um, you know, I used to be taller and I had more hair. No, I was never taller. Um, but that's all, we, we've sold three companies in this space. Um, and the key is, have good technical people, good timing. Unfortunately, we haven't quite got the timing. <laughs> Mr. Bill Gates, why I, I love him, he's a way ahead of his time in every which way. Now, if you look at these countries, you see where the reactors are. Um, but also, I'm not as saying, and I, it's not on there, but is Saudi Arabia. You would think home of cheap oil, right? Why do they need nuclear power? Well, they do. They think they're gonna be exporting energy by 2030. I was over there and that's what they feel. So there are places in the world that nobody even heard of. Um, I know Russia, for example, has offered, uh, set up a reactor just for cryptocurrencies to draw all, all of them out of Greenland and all those cold places. They don't need air conditioning. They're actually trying to get them. So you're seeing more and more demand. As I said, we've got electric vehicles, cryptocurrencies, SMRs, driving the need for electric energy. I don't know about you guys, what do you do everything at night? We plug in things. We never did that five, six years ago or even 10 years ago. Oh, sorry, back. Um, the one of the things that I cannot explain to you guys 
if I could explain this, the stocks would be three times higher and if it made sense. And that is this. What I don't understand is why re, uh, utilities today are not planning ahead. Just think about it. You've got how many, is there a billion pounds over the next eight years are not contracted. They think they're going to get it on a short-term basis. I believe it's because the Japanese have left the industry and they also didn't take their buying out. They took the, the adults have left the playroom. And so now what you've got is very short-term Western utilities driving the demand and the price. And so this is hard, maybe hard to see, but these, the utilities have been doing the opposite of what you're planning to do. What do you plan to do? Buy low, sell high. Would you agree? Well, the utilities do the opposite. When the prices are high, they all jump in like lemmings and they contract heavily, heavily. And when prices are low, they walk away. They do the exact thing that you as individuals in this room will not be doing. You want to buy stocks low and sell high, but they like to contract when things are high because you have to understand utilities are run like government. Bureaucrats do not get uh, blessings for saving money, but also uranium is a very small part of running a reactor, very small part. So if it goes from, uh, uranium goes from, um, you know, 25 to 50 impacts my life, not theirs. It's a very rounding error and what costs to run a reactor. We are very fortunate to have 20% owned by, I call the mothership of our industry, um, the CGN. They operate reactors, they run mines, they do it all. Um, they're the biggest client in the world chemicals the world have. They own 20% of us. They spent over two and a half million dollars US doing homework on every deposit in the world. And there's some great deposits out there, but they chose us to give us $82 million um, to help develop it. And they're our partner moving forward, but they are the mothership. And if you come to the booth, I'll explain more what that really means. And in, in China, you know, it's funny. We never get emails. Or we, I don't know who gets emails every time China starts in a reactor. I haven't got one, but I do seem to get one every time Germany wants to shut one down, right? So it's, it's like the bad news, you know, bears come out all the time, but the good news never seems to show up, like Russia building a reactor just for cryptocurrencies. The Japanese are recovering slowly, a heck of a lot slower than I thought they would be. I thought by now they'd be back up. Um, again, our team, um, you know, how many does how many is companies you've invested in and look in your account and there's four companies sitting in there? Well, we've done that. Had you bought a share of Strathmore in 2005 and even 2007, if you look in your portfolio today, you would see Denison in there because we, we discovered um, a Waterbury asset, sold it. We, um, the company that Strathmore went on, they sold to Energy Fuels. You'd have Denison in your account, you'd have Energy Fuels in your account, you have Fission Uranium in your account. And then we did the, uh, the project with Alpha, we spun out the US assets. No other management team in the history of Uranium and in any other industries where you bought a stock and you look in your account today and there's literally four stocks sitting in your account because you have to have timing, you have to raise money, have a great technical team. Um, on the last note, um, if Fission was a, a movie, we've won every possible award ever. We've won the best project, best management team, best technical team, deal makers, because what we've been able to do, um, nobody has. Maybe we were lucky, but I do believe if you work your ass off, you seem to get lucky. So please come by the booth. Um, I, I do think uranium is going to move. There are a lot of good uranium companies out there. You're lucky it's not that hard to pick. Thanks for your time.